and gentlemen, and welcome to Bernardian Senior Night. We'll be honoring two Bernardian seniors here before this ice hockey game against Oakmont Spartans. First senior is starting at left defense, senior assistant captain Aiden Donahue. Aiden has been playing hockey since age four and has been on varsity for both years. He is undecided on which college she will be attending, but plans on pursuing a career in marketing and advertising. Aiden would like to thank his mother, Kate, who is no longer with us, and his father, Kevin, for all their support. He is also joined by, on the ice by his father, Kevin, and grandparents, Jim and Jerry. Next senior is starting at right wing, senior captain Jason Blue. Jason has been playing hockey since he was eight and has been on the varsity both years. An honor roll student, Jason is still undecided on colleges, but plans on attending in the fall. Jason would like to thank his mother Eileen and father Matt for all their support. He is now joined on the ice by his mother and father. Okay, another round of applause for the two seniors, Aiden Donahue and Jason Blue. Now we'll proceed for the seven minute warm up before we dr drop the puck here at the Civic Center. Tonight we have a special guest in the stands. It's the WPI Pep Band. We come to you live from the Wallace Civic Center on the campus of Fitchburg State University as FATV presents coverage of St. Bernard's Bernardian Ice Hockey. And tonight it's senior night for St. Bernard's as they host the Spartans of Oakmont. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for tuning in. I'm Daniel Bolak. Happy to have you along with us here tonight. St. Bernard's coming to this game with a record of 1-9-1 and one on the campaign, coming off a tough loss on Sunday. Littleton Bromfield had their senior night and the Tigers put up nine on the Bernardians. 9-1 was the final on that one. Dominic Fenner had a power play goal. Jason Blue had an assist. St. B struck early, but just could not stem the tide from the Tigers, who responded in eight, with eight in a row. Mackenzie Donahue with 34 saves in the contest. They'll try to bounce back against an Oakmont team that's been pretty solid in Central Mass. 8-5-1 on the campaign, an improvement from their 4-7 mark in pandemic times. And they're coming off a big win themselves on their senior night on Saturday. They took down the Red Raiders of Pittsburgh Monty Tech 2-1 in overtime. Nate Hyland got his team leading 13th goal of the season. Just a minute 30 into overtime to send the Spartan faithful into a frenzy. Blake Riggins with a goal in that one. Jack Carney and assist Chase Alexis, the freshman, with just 20 saves required. Oakmont did a solid job in controlling that contest. And these two teams, they've already played once before this season, and that was back on December the 29th, and it was all Oakmont all the time up at Cushing Academy. It was a 9-0 win for the Spartans that day. 13 different Spartans with points in that one. Nate Hyland had two goals and assists. Zach Saracen had two goals. Hunter Kucher, Cam Hines, Blake Riggins, Evan Tebow, and Parker Johnson all with goals as well. And Cathal Wells was the one in net getting the shutout for the Spartans, the only shutout that Oakmont has gotten this season. Actually, one of two, I should say. Almost forgot about that. Only shutout that ended up being a victory. 
is the better way of putting it. They had a shutout on January 30th against Lunenburg Air Shirley. A little more impressive because that one took 50 minutes. A little more aggravating because they weren't able to get a goal on the board themselves. But regardless, these two teams have already played once before. And we covered St. Bernard's earlier this season when they took on Fitchburg Monty Tech for the second time. That game ended, the first meeting between the two ended 10-0 in favor of the Red Raiders. The second one, 4-1 plus an empty netter for Fitchburg Monty Tech. St. Bernard's played a lot better in that second meeting, and they're going to be hoping that the second time's the charm, and they'll have a much better performance against Oakmont this time around. We'll throw it down to Jim LaPointe for the rest of the starting lineups and the national anthem. This is Bernardian Senior Night here on FATV. Good evening, high school hockey fans, and welcome to Bernardian Senior Night here at the Wallace Civic Center. Tonight's game features the Oakmont Spartans against the Bernardians of St. Bernard's. Here are the starting lineups. First for Oakmont. At right wing, number 14, Sean Colangelo. <laughs> Left wing, number 16, Brady Cormier. <laughs> Center, number 22, Cooper Carrigan. Defense, number 13, Drake Nelson. Defense, number seven, Chris Sanborn. And in goal, number 33, Cathal Wells. The head coach for the Spartans is Mike Dudo. Now for the Bernardians, starting at right defense. Number 13, Ryan Hill. At left defense, number 19, Aiden Donahue. Starting at left wing, number 11, Eric Walker. At center, number 10, Colin Majowitz. At right wing, number seven, Jason Blue. And in goal for the Bernardians, number 33, Mackenzie Donahue. The head coach is Brad Gilmartin. Officials for tonight's game, Chris Valeri and Paul Marshall. At this time, ladies and gentlemen, students, I would ask you all to please let, stand and as we honor our nation and the flag as the WPI pep band will be playing the national anthem. Gonna have a great soundtrack to tonight's contest, the WPI Pep Band here for St. Bernard's Senior Night. That'll add to the atmosphere. 
Daniel Bolak here with you. Travis Falk on camera and doing all the good stuff to get us on the air. We all thank you for joining us here tonight here on FATV for senior night for St. Bernard's Ice Hockey taking on the Spartans of Oakmont. Starting goalie for the Bernardians is Mackenzie Donahue. The lone netminder on the roster, the sophomore keeper, 11 games played, 1-9 and 1 record, 646 goals against safe percent around 8-11. She'll be looking for a good performance tonight. Oakmont will go with Cathal Wells. He got the shutout against St. Bernard's last time out. Why mess with success? The sophomore keeper will make his sixth start of the season. 3-2 record with a shutout. 220 goals against 90 or so save percentage on the campaign. Bernardians will be going from left to right in the first period in the gold uniforms, white numbers and blue trim while the Spartans in the road green uniforms with white numbers and trim will go right to left in the first 15. St. Bernard's holds, and a pass goes off the head of Jason Blue, passed on by Cooper Karignan into the zone on the right side boards, leaving it off for Brady Cormier into the right wing corner. Karignan will try to move that along for Oakmont, but St. Bernard's gets in the way of that, and here's Jason Blue captain of this Bernardian side. Pushed it to the red line where it's pushed back into the zone by Oakmont. Now cleared out. They're trying to play it off the mishandle. A shot and a save by Wells. Looked like Eric Walker the one to take the shot there for the Bernardians on the left wing. Walker the leading goal scorer for the Bernardians this year. Seven goals and six assists. On the campaign, the junior forward, Nick Tomzak right behind him with six goals. Draw at the blue line, Nick Tomzak around the boards, pushed into the boards there's Drake Nelson. Spartans will take it from Nate Hyland, try to get it out of the zone, held in, pulled down by the Bernardians. Puck goes out to the point, Tomzak through traffic, deflected towards goal rather dangerously, but just cleared the crossbar. Behind the net it goes for Caden Mihalovic, out to the left point. Shot mostly whiffed on, just a little piece Nolan Stout was able to get. And now storming up ice, a penalty coming against the Bernardians as Blake Riggins was instructed on his way to the goal. Puck sent out of the zone by the Bernardians and now we'll get the whistle. A minute 44 in, we'll get our first penalty of the contest. Last night's game, it took us about 36 minutes to get a penalty. But Nick Tomzak guilty of the slash. They'll give power play number one to the visitors from Ashford and Westminster. In Tomzak's case, having to commit that penalty because of the great scoring opp opportunity for Blake Two Riggins, second leading thing. score, 11 Tyler goals on the point. season for the junior forward. Nate Hyland, the sophomore, has 13. Held at the top of the right circle. Shot on, fought off by Donahue as the puck bounces off her blocker and over the net, Hyland with the shot. In the left circle, Riggins with a shot saved by Donahue. She doesn't know where it is. And the loose puck picked up by the Spartans. One shot, two shots. And Donahue able to keep that out. That got dramatic quick. As Donahue, for a brief moment, lost control of the puck, didn't know where it had gone, but able to make a couple big saves to keep the Spartans off the board. Minute 24 to go on the power play, 2.20 gone in the first. And the Spartans threatening for the opening strike. Around the boards, the left side, Isaac Hanula. Pass it along on the half boards for Riggins. He'll go to the point. Now to that right side for Evan Tebow. Right point it goes, Riggins with a touch on, deflected up in the air. Shot from the right circle is deflected off a couple sticks and skates and wide to the left side boards. Hyland moving it along. Look in the left wing corner. As thrown in the direction of goal, knocked down by a Merdardian stick. Hyland will take it in the right wing corner. Out for Tebow, his bounce pass off the boards is corralled by St. B's and thrown all the way down. Haniela will go back, play it from deep in his own end. Puck pops off his stick for a moment, trying to charge in was Majewitz. 
And Blake Riggins on the left side, squeezed off the puck by Ben Stout. St. B's clears and throws it all the way down the length of the ice. Still 20 seconds on the power play for Oakmont, 11.35 to go in the first, no score. Haniella from behind his own net, push the reset up. Evan Tebow on the right side, gains the zone, gets the shot off, puts it wide to the right. Quick turnaround shot is also thrown offline, and that was Tebow getting his own rebound and throwing it back in the direction of goal, but neither of them on target. Penalty is up to Tomzak, back to full strength. And right after they go back to full strength, Oakmont gets the opening strike. It's Evan Tebow who scores short side on Donahue to make it one to nothing. All that work by St. Bernard's to kill off that penalty. They did so successfully, but six seconds after the penalty to Tomzak expires, that time after a couple of shots by Tebow that couldn't find its way on goal, that one did and eluded the blocker Donahue to make it one to nothing. Oakmont regains the zone, shot stopped by Donahue, rebound comes out right in front of her, another backhand chance will be stopped by Donahue as well. The sophomore keeper struggling a little bit with the rebound control, it seems, in the opening going in this contest. She has four saves to her credit. Boy, Oakmont probably feels like they could have three goals by now with them being unable to pounce on those loose pucks. The Guardians will try to get it out of their own end. They'll get it to the red line. Chris Sanborn will settle it. Rim it around the boards to the left wing corner. So Kucher getting the secondary assist. I could not make out on two tries who got the primary. But regardless, Oakmont has the opening goal in this one as this game's about five minutes old. Up the left side, Kyle Vogel. Some space, puts it right out in front. And oh, it's just too easy when you get that pass. Waiting right at the top of the paint, Zach Saracen turns it home to make it 2-0. Just Vogel coming up with a burst of speed up the left side, got the pass across, and Saracen waiting right at the top of the blue paint. All he had to do was get his stick on the puck and direct it into the net. Not a whole lot Donahue could do with that. And 2-0 it goes in favor of the Spartans. 7-1 to one the shots are in the first five and a half minutes of hockey tonight as Colangelo gains the zone for Oakmont in the right circle. Stick battle with Adam Pepin. Out to the right point, Haniello winds, blasts, but it's cut down by a lot of sticks. Battling forward in the right wing corner, back in the Bernardian end. So many players trying to win that puck. Eventually St. Bernard's comes up with it just for a brief moment, kept in the zone by Jack Carney. And the Bernardians will get it out of the zone. Carney will send it back in. On the far side, Pepin trying to move it along. Hunter Lamy trying to clear it out of the zone. Riggins with a shot in the slot, but it's well offline. Went off a stick and ricocheted into the corner. Out of the zone it goes and thrown immediately back in. Strong zone time, possession time corralled by the Spartans. And they go for the one-timer, they score! To the captain waiting in the slot. Able to put it through the five hole. I believe that'll be Evan Tebow with his second to make it three to nothing. St. Bernard struggling to shut down the passing lanes for Oakmont. They've got three quick ones. Thrown in the direction of goal, a second shot by Lammy. 
gloved on for the most part. Puck Spots ends up behind the net. by number 11, Zach Saracen. Assist to number 17, Kyle Bogo. Time of that goal was 5.03, first period. That was the second goal being announced. That was Saracen, assisted by Bogo at 5.03. The third Spartan goal was by... So wait a little longer for that third goal announcement. The third Spartan goal is by number 10, Evan Tebow. Lammy gets in the zone, gets a good shot off, and it's turned aside by Wells. Assisted by number 9, Blake Riggins, and number 15, Jack Catry. Assist the goal, will go on that one to Blake Riggins and Jack Carney. I have a second assist in as many games. And icing called against the Spartans, an offensive zone draw coming for the Bernardians. 14 seconds short of halfway in the first period. 3-0 to the green and white. An explosive start for the visitors, out shooting St. Bernard's 8-2. 48 goals scored this season for Oakmont, 38 conceded. They've got a lot of youth in goal. Cathal Wells is a sophomore playing in his sixth contest this season. Chase Alexis, a freshman, has gotten the majority of starts this year. He's got nine with a 5-3-1 and one record. It's going to be offsides against St. Bernard's as Michael Lucas unable to get back to the blue line and tag up. Because he was so egregiously offsides. I think they were thinking for a moment of moving the face off to the center dot, but instead, not so much. Outside the zone, it'll go. And the face-off won by Cooper Corrigan, who will send it into the Bernardian end. Tom Zach on the far side, pass up, goes off a stick, taken for a brief moment, a touch on by Parker Johnson. Right side boards, Oakmont will throw it off the end boards, where St. Burns will try to get it out. Kept in by Hanula. Hanula's shot goes wide of the cage. Brought up near side, Tom Zach. Sends a Spartan to the ice to lay it offside. Tom Zach's got to tag up. Now it'll be dumped in. Wells will stop that one. Probably would not have counted had it gone. But quickly in transition the other way. That one found its way into the net. Off the glove of Donahue, off the post. The Bernardian back there felt that maybe he'd kept it in. Kept it from going in the net because of the quick transition. The referee was not at the goal line to see for certain if that puck had crossed the goal line. The referees will discuss it. And they'll render their verdict to Jim LaPointe on how exactly they want to assess this. It was a shot in quick transition that Donahue got part of her glove on and the puck made its way downwards, went off the post. The next thing I saw was the puck on the goal line on the stick of the Bernardian. The question was, did that Bernardian fish it out of the net in that quick instant? Two referees, no linesmen in regular season contests. And if there's more officials on the ice, perhaps one of them would have been in a better position, but because of the quick transition, the one who initially signaled the goal was standing on the blue line, did not have the best look of all. The referee's now explaining their verdict there to Aiden Donahue. It's a strange situation, it doesn't happen terribly often. Now the referee will go and explain to Brad Gilmartin. It does look like it is going to count for Oakmont. Now they'll render the scoring to Jim LaPointe.
But a strange situation on what looks to be Oakmont's fourth goal of the contest with 6.43 to go in the first. Spartans buzzing and then some on senior night for St. Bernard's. Oakmont's ready to get on with it. But still, they'll spend a little more time explaining to Brad Gilmartin what they saw and how they're adjudicating this. Now, Nick Tomzak is going to the box for St. Bernard's. Well, we'll stand by for the explanation on that as well. But things not going well for St. Bernard's in this contest. Trailing four goals to nil. And it looks like they're going to be on the penalty kill as well. Tom Zach sitting for what presumably is unsportsmanlike conduct. Is what I would say, based on the four on the ice. There's currently six at the moment. But one off and two on implies that it's actually going to be a misconduct against Tom Zach. Which means he will be sitting for ten minutes. Off the draw zone, gained quick shot, blocked in front of the blue line by the Spartans. Trying to clear it out of the zone. Nolan Stout tries to keep it in. Isaac Canula, take it left wing corner. Tossed around the boards, looking for Hunter Kucher. And off the Bernardian stick. Oakmont makes their way into the Bernardian end, but only be called for offsides. We'll stand by for the scoring on that fourth goal by Oakmont, and we know that Tom Zach is going to be sitting for the rest of the period a little bit of the second for unsportsmanlike conduct. Presumably, words with the official not appreciated. But we'll still stay five aside. Near side touch on by Evan Tebow. He winds and fires. That one, I think, might have gotten the pipe, if not a piece of Donahue somewhere. A blasting shot from the blue line as the puck ricocheted back to the neutral zone. Tebow gets control of it again, converged on by several Bernardians. Now a quick shot goes off the mask of Donahue. Comes up with the save on that one. A laser beam from Blake Riggins. Cross to the right side, and a shot goes wide from Chris Sanborn. Drop past the left side, Drake Nelson throws it on goal, saved by Donahue. Another chance on the bad angle, Donahue gets her paddle on it. On the near side, St. Bernard's able to clear it out of the zone. 6.20 to go, first period, the clock is not moving. Just prolonging the period at this point. And now it'll get started there. We'll see if that gets dealt with at the next whistle as well, but... Gets that whole run, a large run of play with the clock frozen at 6.22. St. Bernard's with a little bit of offensive zone time, comes to an end, two on two, come the Spartans, and it looks like another penalty as Highland is held up. It's one of those you had to make that call there, and you had to make that move, I guess, if you're St. Bernard's. Nate Highland, 13 goals on the season for the sophomore. A very dangerous goal scorer. Cade Mahalovich will join Nick Tomzak in the sin bin for two minutes or less. 5.53 to go, first period, 4 nothing. Oakmont in front. Sparns 0 for 1 on the power play. Did score six seconds after their first one expired. Canadian penalty number six. On 16, Kaden Mihalovic, two minute minor for holding. Time of the penalty, 9.07, first period. So Mihalovic. Brody and penalty was on number five, Nick Tomchak, two minute minor for unsportsmanlike conduct and a 
10 minute misconduct. That penalty was called at 8.17. The fourth spot and goal was by number 22, Cooper Carrigan. Assisted by number four, Isaac Canula. Time of that goal was 8-17 of the first period. So that fourth goal, Cooper Carrigan gets his first of the season. And Isaac Canula gets the assist and a fifth goal for Oakmont. They get the power play strike. On a bouncer from the right side with a lot of pace. Power play goal, and you can see Oakmont, you know, not terribly exuberant celebrating it because they know they don't, it's a tough position to be in. But everything coming up aces for the Spartans. As they now lead five to nothing. In the zone, Ben Stout trying to get an opening, putting it on goal, he's drawn a penalty. So, St. Bernard set to get their first power play of the contest. That pass mishandled, and down the ice it'll go. Picked up for a moment by Shane Law, but his bounce pass goes right onto the blade of a Spartan. And Isaac Hanula will go to the sin bin for two minutes. You listen for a moment to the WPI pep band here on senior night for St. Bernard's. Bernardians looking for a goal. They got a power play strike against Oakmont. Actually against Littleton Bromfield their last time out. Looking for a power play strike here in the first. 4.15 to go in the first frame. They trail by five. Lammy trying to direct it towards goal. A lot of legs in the way. And Oakmont will send it out of the zone. Eric Walker will collect back in his own end. Still skating with it up the near side boards, now behind the net. Kept it going, and oh my goodness, that's an own goal! Jack Carney tried to throw it behind the net. He threw it off, Cathal wells it in! Eric Walker will claim the goal for the effort. And the freshman defenseman just trying to throw it around the boards after he'd cleanly won the puck. But the most disastrous thing that could have happened did. And St. Bernard's gets on the board. On the near side, Ben Stout trying to dig it out. Near the Spartan blue line, eventually dumped out of the zone where Nolan will pick it up. Tried to throw it out of the zone, kept in by Riggins. Now out to the left side, not in a shooting position was Highland. St. Burns will try to come back, but it's two on three. Ben Stout has shown off speed and skill when he's got the puck. He's one of those players to watch out for on St. Bernard's. Here's Blake Riggins. He's got great stats as well. He gets the shot off and it's gloved by Donahue. Bernardian goal was by number 11, Eric Walker. Unassisted, time of that power play goal, 11-11, first period. That Bernardian goal was by Eric Walker, unassisted, power play goal at 11-11. And so, unassisted it goes as Basically, by rule, an own goal has to be given unassisted. <laughs> to the last player that touched the puck for the other team. Caleb Jackala up the left side. He gets it across. One-timer score! Again, it comes down to trying to disrupt those passing lanes. Zach Saracen able to deposit that one. And the five goal lead restored for Oakmont.
But it's just so, so challenging when you've got a player hitting right at the blue paint, just ready for a pass. You're the defense, you've got to work hard to cut that down to prevent them from getting that pass into that position. Spartan six goals by number 11, Zach Saracen. So Saracen gets a goal. Sister number 17. Penalty coming up against St. Bernard's for an Kyle obvious Vogel, hook. Number 25, Players going Taylor tumbling Jacola. a little bit. Now we'll have a whistle. Time of that goal was 12-24, first period. So another power play coming for the Oakmont Spartans. Aiden Donahue for the hook. Will be hooked off the ice for two minutes. Spartans with six in this period and looking for the extra point. Two-minute minor for Holding. Time of the penalty, 12.57. Holding First is what's period. given. Call Wells will gobble that one up. Play it on, only a few saves for him in this contest. Eight for Mackenzie Donahue, and officially at the moment just two for the sophomore keeper on the other end in green and white. Shot goes behind the net. Picked up by Hyland. Hyland to the right circle, drops it off. Now on the left side for Saracen. That's Tebow actually, he'll have it back now. Tebow shot high rising, looking for the top left post. Went a little off from there. Thrown off the boards by Mihalovic, I believe it is. But Oakmon able to keep it in the zone. Drop pass, right point. Holding his Highland in the right circle. Looking for a bad angle shot, trying to pick the space between the post and Donahue. But well, the puck ricochets down and out of the zone. Under 40 to go in the period. Three second difference between penalty clock and game clock. Quick snapper by the Spartans, and it's stopped by Mackenzie Donahue. 34.4 to go in the first period. 31 on the man advantage for the green and white. Senior night for St. Bernard's. Trying to kill off their third penalty of the night. And now a one-timer goes off the post. It's another great chance for the Spartans. Not quite standing at the top of the blue paint there. There was Brady Cormier. He's looking for his first goal of the season and came oh so close. Pass was disrupted there by Dominic Benner. Seven seconds to go in the period, into the zone, right out of it. Could be a breakaway for Ben Stout. Just a couple seconds to work with. He got the shot off, and the save made by Wells to bring this first period to an end. A very interesting 15 minutes, to say the least. We saw a lot of goals. We saw some very strange goals. And through 15 minutes of play, it's St. Bernard's one and Oakmont six. Probably the first time in a while that Oakmont has put six on the board in a frame. But a very solid first 15 for the green and white. Eight, five, and one coming into today. They put nine on the Bernardians back on December the 29th. And coming off that huge win on their senior night against Fitchburg Monty Tech. Well, they're riding the waves of momentum into this one. And coming up with a five goal lead for one period of play. We'll take a break. When we come back, we'll have the second period for you here from the Wallace Civic Center. St. Bernard's one, Oakmont six. The Spernardian Ice Hockey on FA TV. We're back at the Wallace Civic Center on the campus of Fitchburg State University. Getting ready for the second period of senior night between the Bernardians of St. Bernard's and the Spartans of Oakmont. 6-1 Oakmont in front for 15 minutes of play. Daniel Wolak here with you, Travis Falk on camera, audio, and all the other good stuff. The WPI Pep Band in the background. 
providing tremendous atmosphere for this contest. Go over the scoring, there was a lot of it about. Oakmont got the opening strike from Zach, from uh, Evan Tebow. Zach Saracen will come later here. Evan Tebow with 11-10 to go in the frame. Assists from Kyle Vogel and Hunter Kucher. And then a little over a minute later, that was when Zach Saracen got his first strike. Vogel getting an assist there. And then a second one coming for Tebow. Feeds from Riggins and, Blake Riggins and Jack Carney. That made it 3-0. A goal with a little bit of controversy as Cooper Corignan was able to make it 4-0, a shot that went off the glove of Mackenzie Donahue, ultimately in the net. We, I talked with Jim LaPointe during the intermission to get a better idea of what exactly happened there. Puck went off the glove into the net. And the issue that St. Bernard's had that led to a misconduct being given out was there was a delayed penalty against St. Bernard's. They felt they had touched it up before they touched up with the delayed call in force, which would have killed the play. But they played on, and it ultimately resulted in a goal. I will acknowledge that in a similar situation in street hockey, I once threw my equipment in frustration when a similar thing happened to me. I played the ball. I thought directed it very clearly and deliberately to the corner during a delayed penalty. They felt I did not actually constitute possession on that. They played on. They scored. I was very frustrated. So I feel exactly what Nick Tomzak feels as he sits in the bin for a couple more minutes. That made it forward enough at the time. As we'll get to the second period here. St. Bernard's now going right to left in the gold uniforms with white numbering and blue trim. And Oakmont in the road, green uniforms with white numbering and trim goes left to right in this second frame. At the next stoppage, we'll continue the recap of scoring. Shots in the first period were 15 to five in favor of the Spartans. Ben Stout trying to keep control of that puck. As he battles with a Spartan there on the left half boards. I think that's Sanborn there trying to dig that at free. Ultimately, it is jarred free. They picked up on the left side going behind that around to the far side. Oakmont looking to push it out of the zone. Will be thrown back in as it goes off out of the reach of Corignan and down behind Cathal Wells. Nolan Stout in the neutral zone, dumps in, settled down by Drake Nelson. Nelson off the boards, out of the zone. St. Bernard's able to tag up, stay on side. Walker, backhand chance, climbs the ladder, too high it goes. Thrown back in the direction of goal. Nobody there for the Bernardians to try to turn that towards Wells. Nelson trying to clear the zone while falling down. Ends up on his rear end and nothing to show for it. Eventually able to stand his ground and retrieve the puck. So continues to keep control of it with Bernardians harassing him for it. Finally out of the zone it goes. And it'll go down for icing. Oakmont was able to get a fifth goal from Hunter Kucher. Assists for Zach Saracen and Kyle Vogel on that one. And then St. B's drew a penalty thanks to the strong play of Ben Stout. And on the man advantage, Eric Walker into the zone, dispossessed of the puck by a Spartan, only for said Spartan to mishandle his throw around the boards and put it into his own net to make it five to make it a five to one game. Oakmont was able to respond with Zach Saracen's second goal of the game. Assists for Caleb Jackala and Kyle Vogel. Vogel's got four points tonight. All assists. Been a pretty good game there for the junior forward. Gets another point in this contest. He'll have doubled his point tally coming into tonight. He had three goals and two assists. Yes, seven goals in that first period. And that's stolen away. Hyland with some room gets the shot and a pad save by Mackenzie Donahue. Now to the left point, a shot ricochets wide. Hyland for Hanula. Blast through traffic. Score! That went through a lot of bodies, but found its way past Donahue. 
and it's seven to one. Isaac Canula got the shot off and there was a whole labyrinth of players in front of Donahue. That puck had to get through a lot of gaps. But it solved the maze and found its way into the net for Oakmont seven. Hunter Lammy, a backhand centering feed and a shot there by Jason Blue is deflected wide. I think it went off a body in front. A lot of players going tumbling in this contest. As the centering pass cut down. The stick battle in the left circle. Ben Stout trying to get to that puck. Hanula to dispossess. Saracen off the boards. Assisted by number four, Isaac Canula. Time of the goal, 2.56 second period. That was Tebow's Third goal of the game, assisted by Hanula at 2.56. So Hanula's shot deflected by Evan Tebow into the net. And there's an eighth for Oakmont. As the puck makes his way out in front and turned home by the Spartans. Might be Saracen completing his hat trick to make it 8-1. Two goals in 63 seconds for Oakmont. They are running riot in Fitchburg. Six in the first, two in the second. It's the puck out in front. Wells loses his stick. St. Bernard's trying to keep control of the puck. Want to get it free from the boards. Wells gets his stick back, can't cleanly grasp it. It's always a prime opportunity to try to get a shot on when the goalie doesn't have his paddle. Saracen, assisted by number 25, Caleb Jacola, and number 15, Jack Carey. Time of that goal, 3.59. So Saracen completes his hat trick as well. And Caleb Jackala gets an assist on that one. So does Jack Carney. They've each got two assists tonight. Oakmont with eight on the board in this contest. And we're not quite past halfway yet either. Puck loose in the paint. Spartans can't turn it towards goal. And here comes Walker up the ice with a little bit of space to work with. Setting, trying to take his shot. Couldn't get into a good shooting position. Good pressure from Oakmont to prevent that. A chance, a jam shot on the far side. Wells turns that away. Wells also loses his stick for the second time in the last few minutes. He gets it back this time. Shooting for goal from the right point is Evan Tebow. Three goals tonight for the senior forward. Now to 10 goals on the season. Buck back into the Spartan zone. Behind the net. One Bernardian trying to dig that puck free. Take it out of the grasp of the Spartans. And now turn towards goal. Knocked away by Cathal Wells. The shot by Colin Majewitz. The Wells will take a face off. 8.41 to go in the second period. St. Bernard's 1, Oakmont 8. The high for goals conceded this season by St. Bernard's is 10 from the season opener against Fitchburg Monty Tech. I think they were hoping for a little more magic compared to the last time. As we mentioned, first time they played Fitchburg Monty Tech, lost 10 nothing. Second time, held them to four, plus an empty netter. Blake Riggins trying to put all the moves on. Riggins with 11 goals this season. Nate Highland with 12. Neither of them have gotten goals tonight. 
Island, in fact, is without a point. Considering how he's trying to control the puck here, there's a chance he might have heard me. He might want to do something about it. So they're trying to throw it towards goal. Donahue trying to hold the post, and it's put in by Oakmont for another. I think that was Island getting the last touch to make it nine to one. Puck going every which way in front of Donahue. So challenging to track in those situations. Offsides is called. For those wondering about the mercy rule in MIAA play, we'll talk about that more in the third period because right now it means nothing. Here's Eric Walker. Right circle, turns around, gets a shot off, turned aside by Wells. Up the near side. Oakmont trying to push it along. Nate Highland, system by number nine, Blake Riggins, and number 10, Evan Tebow. Time of the goal, 7.09. Tebow and period. Riggins getting the assists on the goal for Highland, his 14th of the season. Donahue will jump on top of that and cover it. 7.13 to go, second period. St. Bernard's one, Oakmont nine. Spartans last time out against St. Bernard's had three in the first, five in the second, one in the third. This time out, six in the first, three in the second. Still about half a hockey game to play. St. Burns try to go for the bank shot there off Wells. The one goal he's conceded a rather strange one, although by no means his fault. Icing against Oakmont. Just a bit of friendly fire. Shots 21 to 9 in favor of the Spartans. 6 to 4 in the second period. Also great news out of New Bedford tonight. Fitchburg State coming away with a 5-1 win over UMass Dartmouth. A huge win for the Falcons, as that will actually guarantee them a top two finish in the MASCAC this season. That means a home game in the quarterfinals and a guaranteed home game in the semifinals if they win, icing against Oakmont. Might not have been icing if we had hybrid icing in high school hockey play, but no touch icing in effect. And the faceoff will come down to one side of Cathal Wells. St. Bernard's 24 goals scored coming into tonight on the season from their 11 games, 72 conceded. The defense just in for a tremendous challenge tonight. That's gonna go over and back. That will be offside. Caleb Jackala feeling, I would have rather you not called that. Draw will come on the far side of the ice. 6.20 to go in the second period. You mentioned the Falcons winning the front half of a home and home with UMass Dartmouth. They'll be playing them two nights from now here at the Civic Center. 6.30, puck drop. Hope you'll join us for that. A lot of sports here as we go into crunch time in the high school winter sports season. Thrown towards goal and knocked away by Wells. Majewitz trying to step up and get a shot off and Wells stops that one too. Looks like a penalty coming from this as well. It's the second of five games we're bringing you this week here on FATV. Friday night we'll have the rivalry on the hardwood, Fitchburg and Lemonster doing battle in boys basketball. Seven o'clock start from the Grutchfield Fieldhouse. And then on Saturday, Fitchburg State will be playing host to Anna Maria. Practically a breather game, it's non-conference. Why not keep the momentum going? Jack can't. Jack Carney in the box, the freshman defenseman. 
referee, two minute minor for holding. It's called for the Time hold. St. B's on their second power play of the night. That shot goes off the side of the net and behind. Holding at the right point, St. B's. Going for the one-timer, trying to hit Walker there. Gets very little of the puck and mostly air. And Blake Riggins will skate it up, get towards goal, and it's turned aside by Donahue. Riggins coming in tonight, second on the team in goal scoring with 11. Some of his teammates have been doing their best to close the gap tonight. Riggins knocked off the puck as the puck makes its way to Donahue, and now that's stolen away. Strong forecheck by Oakmont. That being Evan Tebow, one of the two captains with Isaac Hanula. Tebow with a hat trick tonight. That shot turned aside by Wells. Off the body, perhaps off the noggin. 30 seconds to go on the power play for St. Bernard's, their second of the night. That pass ends up going behind Jackula. Caleb Jackula in the right wing corner will hold and will engage in a contest to keep away. Make the Bernardians spin their wheels. Jackala gets tangled up with one of the Bernardians and they're gonna have to call that as shenanigans going on behind the play. Caleb Jackala getting twisted and tangled there with Nick Tomzak. I think they're gonna take both of them here. Jackalow thought he'd gotten away with that, but Tom Zach in the bin yet again. First penalty against St. Bernard's in the second period. Outshot 23 to 11 in this contest, trailing nine to one with 3.48 to go in the second. So, unless these don't cancel, unless these penalties don't match up somehow, we should be skating five aside. Isaac Hanula and Jason Blue at the official's crease to receive instructions. Open up the door for Tom Zach. And I think the officials have decided he's played enough ice hockey today. Caleb Jacola, two minute minor for holding. Bernardian penalty was on number five, Nick Tomchak, two minutes for holding. Tom Check also received a 10 minute misconduct for removing his helmet in the game on the ice. So Tom Check gets two minutes for holding and a 10 minute misconduct. It's his second 10 minute misconduct of the game. So he has been ejected. And so Tom Zach given two minutes for holding and then he took off his helmet. So he was willing to more than happily engage in the heel roll. But to do that means a second 10 minute misconduct against him. And two game misconduct, and two 10 minute misconducts in a contest is an automatic game misconduct. So he takes no further part in the game. I'd wondered if maybe he had picked up a second minor penalty for that. And considering on the first misconduct, he had gotten a minor, which was canceled out by a delayed penalty and a goal on it, that he would have gotten four minors. And in high school hockey, four minor penalties also gets you the gate. Eight penalty minutes through minors and majors in an automatic game misconduct as well. Oh 
So considering the penalties that have been assessed, we should stay five aside. So we've got the two minors there. And then Tom Zach with the second penalty being a misconduct, isn't going to change the manpower for either side. It'll remain five aside. Originally, they were going to have Adam Pepin serve the penalties, but turns out they don't really need anybody else to serve those penalties. So, just five aside hockey, and we'll just get right back at it. Eric Walker's shot is padded away by Cathal Wells. In the left wing corner, dug out by Oakmont. Pushed up near side, flipped down the ice. Sell to the blue line by Aiden Donahue. And we have a whistle. And another penalty. This one's against St. Bernard's. Eric Walker, very frustrated with how this senior night has gone. Slams the penalty box door in frustration. He opens it, slams it again as he shuts it. He's called for slashing. And it's going to be power play number four for Oakmont. They're one for three on the man advantage tonight. The two minute minor. Slashing, time of the penalty, 11.41. And yes, it can be very much a frustrating night for St. Barnard's. It's their senior night trying to celebrate the season. You know, their second season since they restarted the program. They got a victory earlier in this campaign against St. Joseph's Prep. Also able to play Gardner, a very solid Gardner team to a 4-4 tie. Obviously down by eight tonight, lost by eight just a couple nights ago. With just some frustration bubbling over. Oakmont looking to make it double digits. 2.30 to go in the second. 9-1 to the green and white. The puck makes its way to Mackenzie Donahue before Brady Cormier can chase that one down. She'll cover for a draw. 64 seconds remain on the power play for Oakmont. Draw one by St. Bernard's, brought around to the far side corner. Oakmont trying to settle down, take control there from Saracen. Out to the left point, Vogel holds. Left corner. Migrating around to the near side. The right point, Sanborn. Moving it back for Saracen. Battling there with Shane Law. The shot through traffic. They score! Through a lot of bodies, Donahue couldn't read it well enough. Power play goal for Oakmont there, second of the night, and it's 10. <laughs> Oakmont trying to make a late change, ended up with seven skaters on the ice. Some St. B's faithful would like too many men to be called for that. They caught it right as the puck was being dropped, so nothing more to be assessed. That matches the season high conceded by St. B's this season. The long night continues. So they make their way, get a shot from Ben Stout. Gloved down by Cathal Wells. Slammed out of the zone, down the ice. Icing it'll be. 80 seconds to go in the frame.
Every excuse I've got to let you listen into that WPI pep band, I will happily take. Hunter Kucher, assisted by number seven, Chris Sanborn, and number 11, Zach Saracen. Time of the goal, 13-12. That was a power play goal for Kucher, assisted by Sanborn and Saracen. Time of that goal is 13-12. So it's, I mean, second goal of the game for Hunter Kucher. The freshman forward now has five goals on the season. Also has an assist tonight. For Sanborn, gets an assist on that one. His first point of the contest. And Zach Saracen puts another feather in the cap. He's got a five point night, three goals and two assists. 35 seconds to go in the second frame, and this is going to be disaster. It's 11 now. A sloppy turnover, and Parker Johnson will make it 11 to 1. Just a whiffed on pass and suddenly Mackenzie Donahue staring down a two on O. As Aiden Donahue sacrifices a stick. Yeah, it's been a tough one for the Bees. Walker gets a good shot off there on Cathal Wells. He'll gobble that up. 14 saves for Wells, 15 saves for Donahue, 21 and a half to go in the second. Spartans lead by a touchdown, extra point and field goal. The Bernardians currently held to a rouge. Nolan Stout whiffing on the shot, trying to get it back. Walker with 12 seconds shoots, goes just wide of the cage. Majewitz, right side. And buzzer will sound to bring us to the end. Number 14, Sean Colangelo. And number 16, Brady Cormier. Time of the goal, 14.31. Come on down. And so we get the goal there. Parker Johnson's third of the season. Assists there for Sean Colangelo. His first point of the campaign. And Brady Cormier getting his fourth. And so at the end of two periods of play, Senior night not going to script for St. Bernard's. They trail by 10, 11 to one the score through 30 minutes of play. Just another strong period for Oakmont. 11 shots for them, five found the back of the net. Bernardians a much better second in, in one sense, conceding fewer shots, fewer goals, and getting 10 shots on Cathal Wells, but he turns them all aside. So we'll take a break. When we come back, we'll have the very brief third period of hockey. Through 30 minutes of play, it's St. Bernard's 1, Oakmont 11. This is Bernardian Ice Hockey on FATV. a lot of fun listening to the WPI pep band playing here tonight on senior night for St. Bernard's. St. Bernard's trailing 11 to 1 through 30 minutes of play. Daniel Bolak, Travis Falk here with you. Travis with all the camera and technical stuff tonight. And now 15 minutes of hockey. Basically what will happen is Jim LaPointe will start the clock and it's not going to stop till it runs out. 
because that is how the mercy rule works in MIAA play. Doesn't mean anything for the first two periods of play, but once an eight goal lead is reached after 30 minutes of hockey, then they'll just keep that clock running. Already a season high conceded by St. Bernard's in this contest, 11. Six in the first, five in the second for Oakmont. Zach Saris and Evan Tebow both completing their hat tricks. Nate Hyland getting a goal. Hunter Kucher getting his second. And Parker Johnson getting on the board as well. St. Burns going left to right in the gold. Shot off the glove of Wells. Now back out to the right point. Another shot cut down off the stick of Drake Nelson. The shot originally taken by Ryan Hill. Hill tries to keep that in the zone, but eludes his grasp. And down the ice it goes. Worldly picked up by Donahue. Aiden Donahue, one of the two seniors being honored tonight, along with Jason Blue for St. Bernard's. Put out into the slot off the stick of Sean Colangelo. And out of the zone. Colangelo picking up his first point of the campaign late in the second period. Around the board's near side. Colangelo settling it down, has a stick lifted. St. B's gets it out of the zone. Spartans back in their own end, trying to push that down ice, no icing. Shane Law will go and retrieve. Dropping behind the net, pass off the stick of a Spartan. Nick Highland. Still lurking about. Right out in front, shot saved by Mackenzie Donahue on the chance there from Colangelo. Already has an assist, would like to have a goal. So many Spartans with points tonight. Try to have a look at the roster and see how many Spartans who have dressed haven't gotten their name on the score sheet tonight. Trying to get back out in front for Colangelo. I think they're really trying to get him a goal. Stretch pass, Eric Walker trying to read that one. Will go off his body, he'll settle it. Left point, takes a blast for the stop by Wells. So the Isaac Canula has an assist, Hunter Kucher's got a couple of goals. Chris Sanborn has an assist. Blake Riggins has a couple of assists. Evan Tebow's got a hat trick and an assist. Zach Saracen has a hat trick and two assists. Nate Highland's got a goal. Drake Nelson, don't see number 13 on there yet, so Drake Nelson, the senior defenseman, will be looking for a point. John Colangelo assisted on the 11th Oakmont goal. That's put back out in front, and Wells will shepherd that aside. About three minutes gone in the third period, 10 goal lead, Oakmont. Jackala overskates the puck a little bit. Bernardians able to get it out of the zone. Doubling back is Kyle Vogel. Four assists all in the first period for him. Brady Cormier got an assist on that 11th goal as well. Cooper Corrigan scored in the first period. Parker Johnson got that 11th goal and Caleb Jackala's got a couple of assists. So yeah, it's everyone with Drake Nelson amongst the players who have dressed tonight. Cody Knott, Jacob Lively, Cam Hines, and Jackson Matthew and Logan Smith all playing the role of Sir not appearing in this contest. And the goalkeepers don't have any points either. It does sound like an uncommon event actually in the game before this. North Middlesex and Neshoba. North Middlesex taking a big 3-0 win, giving Neshoba just their second loss of the season. It was 1-0 plus two empty netters. And North Middlesex netminder Aaron Scorelli, 34 saves for him, a shutout, and he assisted on the second empty netter. So he did get his number on the score sheet in the assist column. And here's Evan Tebow. Skating it up on the far side. Goes for the self pass, he'll get that. Played to the boards by St. Bernard's. And skating it up 
here is Ben Stout. This drop pass deflected away. And now trying to feed Colangelo again. I really think they're trying to get him a goal. Cool. We'll see how that develops as Aiden Donahue with the shot padded away by Cathal Wells. 16 saves to the sophomore netminder. Here's Colangelo. Got a lot of heavy hitters out there with him. Of course, he's starting defenseman. Dominic Benner up to the left circle. Five minutes gone. I think we've only had one stoppage in the period thus far. Benner trying to center in front. Waiting there was Mihaljevic. Not able to get his stick on it. Stretching it up and now Highland up the left side. In a battle with the Bernardian and Eric Walker. Drop pass for nobody in particular. All the green shirts were miles away. It's cleared out of the zone, a slow pass, but picked up by Riggins. Last year, the Bernardians, you know, their first season, they had, I believe, just 12 skaters at their disposal. Not a whole lot of players to work with last year. This year, they've got many more skaters, nine forwards and seven defense. One keeper in goal in Mackenzie Donahue. He's had to weather the storm quite a few times. And it was just a matter of the defense really getting overpowered by Oakmont. A lot of talent the Spartans have at their disposal. Clock will keep on running, as we mentioned, the mercy rule in effect. Oakmont up 11 to 1, 8.20 to go in the contest. Dump down the ice. This will be icing again. Puck took a little while to make its way to the goal line, but eventually it did cross it, and all the way back down will go. Control briefly by the Bernardians. Ryan Gallant taking the draw for St. Bernard's. On the near side, a board battle. The team's trying to dig that one free. Gallant gets a hold of it. Can't get the pass off, and it's played off the boards, high out of the zone. Back to the defense of Donahue. Try to move that along. Here is Gallant, right circle, gets the shot, goes off the blade of Chris Sanborn into the left wing corner. Sanborn will get there, try to push it out of the zone. St. B's has other ideas and a great chance out in front, but spun wide of the cage by St. B's. Is Gallant trying to get on top of that one? Dumped in by Oakmont. Fresh legs will come on the ice for the visitors from Ashburn Am and Westminster. Stretch pass trying to settle it down is Mihaljevic. Gets in a bit of a wrestling match with Chris Sanborn. But Sanborn wins the puck. And Oakmont able to get it out of the zone. Kyle Vogel will send it back in and around the boards. Right wing corner, Nolan Stout first to arrive. Goes to the right point with Perignan. Tries to move it along. They'll come out of the zone. Perignan gets there in front of his own bench. Moves parallel to the blue line and will dump in. Into the left wing corner. And dug out by St. Bernard's, bringing it up ice. Pass too strong for Dominic Benner. Push back in the direction of goal. On the near side, it will come to the left point and Nelson. Nelson will rim it around the boards. And a two on two developing for the Bernardians. It's as much as it'll go though. 
Jack Carney shutting that one down. St. B's trying to get back on side. They're having trouble regaining the zone with the Oakmont pressure. Shane Law skating up in the left wing corner. Around the boards for Ben Stout. Tries to spin it out in front, maybe looking for Hunter Lammy. But one of the Spartans getting in the way. In front, backhand shot saved by Wells. Loose puck on the right side, but just can't get a centering feed. Wells also in the way, turned 180 degrees and sort of blocking off the passing routes. It's poked away there by Brady Cormier. He gets on his horse trying to run that down. Now Colangelo. It's tied up as three players go to the ice. St. Beast comes up with it on an odd man rush, a three on two. Walker blasted into the zone looking for a rebound from Cathal Wells. Wells not clean to, not keen to play ball on that. He'll hold for a draw. Only a handful of stoppages in this third period. We have a moment. St. B's starting goalie last year, Hannah Bergeron. She graduated. Now at Arcadia University in Glenside, Pennsylvania. She's played nine games there for the Knights. She's 4-4 four four with a 3.00 goals against and a 9.19 save percentage with two shutouts. And St. B's are going to get a second goal here as they throw it towards goal and able to pick up the loose puck. Nolan Stout leads the handshake line as it's 11 to two. St. B's continuing the pressure looking for another goal and they found one. Goals by number 10, Colin Majewitz. Sister number 20, Michael Lucas. And number nine, Nolan Stout. Nolan Stout led the handshake line, but instead gets just the secondary assist. Michael Lucas gets his first varsity point. And Colin Majewitz gets his second goal of the season. Five shots for the Bernardians. None officially registered for Oakmont in this third frame. Right out in front, a good chance, but turned aside by Wells. There's Lucas there in front of the blue paint on the left side. Oakmont quickly skating up ice, trying to perhaps restore that 10 goal margin. Kucher had to check up because of the delayed offsides. Now he'll throw it into the zone, throw it on tar towards the goal but just wide of Donahue. Now a stretch pass. Too far from Mihaljevic, but he tries to center for a one-timer trying to find Benner. There's a shot from the left point. A rocket gloved by Wells. Controlled by Oakmont. This goes behind the net. 80 seconds to go in the contest. On the near side, a lot of players battling for it. Jackala trying to move it up ice. Pinballs off a lot of legs. Jackala gets it back. And he'll push up on an odd man rush. At least a two on one. Getting it across. Colangelo is denied by Donahue. Really tried to give Sean Colangelo a goal there. And that shot turned aside by Wells. He'll melt it down. 45 seconds left as the clock will keep on ticking. It's the best chance Colangelo had there.
Trying to make sure the net's on its moorings. Now, of course, continue to keep the clock running. 10 seconds left. Take their time on the faceoff. And they're not even going to bother to drop it. That'll bring an end to this game. Oakmont seemed a little frustrated they didn't want to drop it for one last go. But ultimately, St. Bernard's can say they took that third period, outshot the Spartans 7-2, got the lone strike in it. But the final score here from the Wallace Civic Center at St. Bernard's 2 and Oakmont 11. I think the St. Bernard's players kind of wanted to uh, get, take a shot at one last goal, one last shot towards goal, but with the clock running with the net and everything else, the decision was made. That's enough hockey for today. It was a dominant hockey game for Oakmont. Six in the first, five in the second. Every skater but one getting a point in this game. And the Spartans will skate out of here with an 11-2 win. St. Bernard's record down to 110 and 1, Oakmont to 9-5 and 1 on the season. St. B's still have a couple of games to make up, one with St. Joseph Prep. They haven't had a chance to play their new rivals in St. Paul yet this season. They were supposed to play them at the DCU Center last week, some inclement weather got in the way. They're going to play St. Paul at the end of the season. They've also got to play St. Joseph Prep. That was the one team they beat earlier in the campaign. They'd like another shot at them. Oakmont's got one more game on the schedule to make up. February the 16th, they'll be taking on Assabet. Six o'clock start. That one from Cushing Academy. Most likely. But yeah, not much more you could really say. Oakmont dominated this game from start to finish. Playing Captain Party Pooper for senior night for St. Bernard's. Great job, guys. And of course, we'll thank one more time the WPI Pep Band for adding the atmosphere tonight. Great to hear them. It's, it's been a good while since I've gone to a high school sporting event with a pep band there. Probably not since calling some games in the uh, basketball playoffs at Worcester State. Uh, ice hockey game with a pep band? Yeah, it's been a while, to say the least. But the final score here from the Wallace Civic Center on senior night for St. Bernard's. It's the Bernardians 2 and the Spartans 11. I want to once again remind you our next broadcast will be on Thursday as Fitchburg State will be taking on UMass Dartmouth in the back half of a home-and-home. 6.30 home. start time here from the Civic Center. We'll hope you join us for that. We want to thank our underwriters who help make all our remote productions possible. Workers Credit Union, the Sentinel and Enterprise, Rollstone Bank and Trust, Unitil, UMass Memorial Health, Health Alliance, Clinton Hospital, North End Subaru, and Minuteman Press. So that'll do it here from the Wallace Civic Center. Again, final score, St. Bernard's 2, Oakmont 11. For Travis Falk and everyone else here at FATV, I'm Daniel Bolak saying thank you for tuning in. We hope to see you next time. And until then, so long from Fitchburg. <laughs>